Hey, what is up everybody? I'm Starlord, and a lot of you guys on the PlayStation 4 who are new to the actual mods on Fallout 4 have been asking me to do this video in particular, a video which basically covers the do's and don'ts of mods, and kind of just go over the basics of installing mods, uninstalling mods, and even your load order. I've seen a lot of people have very badly corrupted games because they kind of just don't know how mods are working and I guess some people just kind of need this guide and obviously I am a guides person and I will try and help you guys out as much as I can to make your modding experience very safe, very clean and very enjoyable. So make sure that you do stick around for the whole video guys as it does pose some important information. Okay, so starting off with the very basic kind of question I get asked, and that is, how do I actually sign up with Bethesda.net? Now, originally, if you are on your console, it will redirect you through your console's web browser to Bethesda.net and ask you to actually sign up there and then. I would honestly not recommend that you try and sign up on your consoles or on your smartphones because the mobile sites and just the kind of console sites are very annoying to work with. They are very annoying, the layout is horrible, and it's kind of slower than an actual PC. So what I would recommend is you go to your nearest PC, go to Bethesda.net on your web browser, and then you will be on a page such as this one right here. You will see the Bethesda logo right there, games, mods, community, news, and shop. All the way over here on the right hand side, it will say sign up or log in. What you want to do is sign up, have a valid email address, and honestly, it is that simple. It's a very simple, kind of easy process on how to sign up on this website. Now, once you are signed in like I am right here, hey, I'm Starlord, we're going to go over to mods over on the left hand side. Click on Fallout 4 or Skyrim Special Edition, whichever one you want to. And then you will be on a page such as this one. Now for this tutorial, I am going to go to over here to platform and I'm going to go over to PlayStation 4 as I am actually making this specifically for PlayStation 4 users as you guys are kind of new to mods. Click on your preferred console and this will bring up all of the PlayStation 4 mods that have been created and uploaded to Bethesda.net. As you can see, there is already 287, which is very impressive considering we don't have external assets. Now right here, we're going to go straight in and pick a mod that we are interested in. This one right here, OCD Decorator, is probably one of the biggest mods on the PC and the Xbox. A very recommended, highly recommended mod to install. So click on it right here. And then you will see the pictures and the information about the actual mod. Before adding to library or favoriting any mod, I always recommend that you go over here to read more and read the description of the mod. As you can see right here, there are already known issues and compatibility issues with this mod on the PlayStation 4. This is very important information when you're actually installing mods. One slight compatibility issue can make your game's graphics go all purple, green, all textures horrible. You know, you do not want this because this could potentially mess up your save file. And it would basically be your fault for installing the mod. That would how it be coming across anyway. So always make sure that you actually read all of the mods descriptions and maybe even some console, sorry, some comments about the actual mod and from people who have actually installed it. So this one I know is a very trustworthy mod and what we're going to do from our PC once we're logged into our Bethesda.net account if you want to actually have this mod on your PS4 we're going to click on add to library. Simply that's that's easy just click on add to library that is literally all you do. Now that mod is basically on your PS4. Okay so what I've just done is went through all of the different mods in the actual mod selection. And I saw a couple of mods that I thought were pretty cool. I've actually added them to my library. And now what we are going to do, guys, is switch over to our console and we're going to install them. Okay, so I am on my console right now. I'm actually using my PC for ease of access, but it still works just like a PlayStation 4. So firstly, what we're going to do, guys, is go down to the mod section right here. Click on it and it should log you into your Bethesda.net account. If you've never logged into that account, it will prompt you for your username and password. Simply just sign in and you should never have to do it pretty much ever again. Firstly, we see this layout and we can see that I have a lot of updates for a lot of mods that I have installed on my console. But here is the real reason we're going to go down. 
we should see something called library, my library. And these are all of the different mods that you have favorited on Bethesda.net. Just for ease of access, they will show up here so that if you are, let's say at work, and you're on the PC, go and favorite a couple of mods. Once you get home onto your PlayStation 4, they will show in my library, but that doesn't mean that they are installed. So what we're gonna do is click on, let's say, uh, this one right here, Deadly Super Mutants. We're gonna click on it, and then we are going to download. It's pretty much as simple as that. But like I did say earlier on guys, make sure to always check the description on the right hand side as this will pose a lot of important information including anything about compatibility issues, problems with the mod, whether it's a work in progress or even just things that you may not want to have in your game. So as you can see, I have activated the mod, as you can see right there, and we're going to go to our load order now. This is very simple, we just go and press Y or triangle on the actual uh, main menu of the mod selection page, and we should be greeted with this menu right here. You will see a lot of mods showing up here, and the ones with the tick next to it are the ones that are currently active on your computer. Now as you can see, I have my Enhanced Blood Textures Basic mod actually installed right now, and if I want to, I can hover over any mod I want and activate it and deactivate it. It's pretty much that simple. But when it comes to the load order, things can get a little bit complicated, and I have already saw that a lot of you guys have corrupted your save files, and you know, for somebody who had like 500 hours on this game, and then my save got corrupted, I was not happy, and to be honest, if that happens to you guys, I will feel fucking sorry as hell because I know exactly how it feels. Now, what I would suggest to actually be as safe as possible when installing mods is, like I said, read the description of the mod. Now, let's say the Enhanced Blood Textures mod said in the description that it needs to be the first mod to load up in your game. What you would do is press the X button or the square if you're on PlayStation 4 and you would change the load order of this mod. It basically means that this mod will actually load up before any of the others. Now, if it is an important mod and it needs to override every other mod that you've installed. So, huh, let's say, let's say for example, if you did get a graphic pack on the PlayStation 4, which, you know, as of yet, that will not likely happen. But let's say it did. Let's say it changes all of the in-game textures to high quality. What you would do is put that last in your load order on the Xbox One or the PlayStation 4. And after all of the mods have actually loaded up, that mod would then be the last mod to actually activate and it would pretty much override all of the textures from all of the other mods, making them high quality. Now I know that sounds very complicated, I honestly do not blame you if you find it very complicated to understand, it took me a while to understand it too, but eventually you will get what I'm talking about there. If you need to, just play over that last part, just kind of take it slow and kind of let it soak in, because yeah, it can be a little bit difficult. Now lastly, what I wanted to do was give you guys an example of how bad your game can really fuck up and what to do when you want to uninstall a mod. So for example, I'm going to be using this one right here, the Settlement Objects Expansion Pack. Now although this actual mod isn't on the PlayStation 4 console, there is one very, very similar. Now, as you can see in the description of this mod, at the very top right there, in capitals, it says, make sure you know how to uninstall this mod. Now, stupidly, I didn't know, I didn't even read the description. I completely just deleted the mod without actually disabling it first, and it completely crashed my game. Pretty much everything went from my settlements, everything was gone, and it was all my fault because I never read the descriptions. Now as you can see right there, if we want to uninstall this mod, we simply do not go and press Y to delete it or triangle to delete, no, we must go to this mod menu and disable it, then go back into our game, save our game, then we go back into our mod menu and then we will delete it from our console. So one more time guys, make sure that you listen to that part very carefully as that is my best practice for actually uninstalling mods. And believe me, I've gave that kind of, I guess, a tip to somebody before, they haven't followed through with it, and then they've pretty much lost all of their safe data, their game corrupted, they had to 
uninstall a game and then install it once more and it was just one of those horrible situations that you kind of don't want anyone to have hence why I'm making this guide and I also would like to say I'm very sorry that it has been quite a lengthy guide it's just I wanted to be as basic and kind of informative as I possibly could. Also, if you do have any more questions about mods in general, please leave them in the comment section below. I will maybe do a follow-up part two to this video as there kind of is a lot of information about mods and obviously I don't want this video going to like 15 minutes long or anything like that, but I do hope that all of the information in today's video has been able to help you have a safe and enjoyable modding experience. And please, if you have had a bad experience before coming to this video, please do not let it discourage you as modding is such a great thing and it completely opens up your game to new heights. And uh, I just want everybody to enjoy Fallout kind of modded, I guess, and to experience other people's creations. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching, if you did find this video helpful then please remember to leave a like, and until next time, I've been Star Lord. I'll see ya!